My first interest in clocks really came from a very young age when I was about 14, 15 repairing clocks for other people at school and I used to go around to the jewellers shops and collect clocks they didn't want and I could fix. I was very lucky that there was a jewellers near where I lived that took me on and he taught me everything I know about clocks and watches so I'm very grateful for him for what he taught me. Unfortunately it's a bit of a dying breed, there's no one now really going into the industry as there was when I started. Youngsters aren't really interested in going into clocks and watches. A big part of the industry that's changing rapidly from when I first started in the early 1970s is that digital watches came in. They were absolutely fantastic. They kept perfect time. You just change the battery once every year or two. They were fantastic. But now, the industry is reverting very much back to mechanical watches for high-end pieces. People want that delicate intricacy of how it's been made and how it ticks and how it works. Whereas a quartz watch is a very dead piece of machinery. It has no life in it. It doesn't tick. It just sits there. Another interesting part about the industry is spare parts. Obviously you're getting all these old clocks and watches coming in that could be two, three hundred years old. You can't get parts for those. So the interesting thing is actually making the parts. I've inherited and bought over the years masses amount of old glasses and gears and wheels. So often I can just modify bits and pieces to fit clocks and watches and it keeps them going for another hundred years. That's, that's good with me. I've been very lucky in my career to have worked on a huge variety of clocks and watches ranging from little watches worth two pounds, church clocks, stable clocks, tower clocks, up to watches worth tens of thousands of pounds.